Irma Maya is such a badass. Was there <laughs> something about this character or about this particular um, film itself that really made you want to be a part of it? Yeah, you know, I, um, I was really happy that filmmaker Hasham Haji, he was brave enough to talk uh, about such a difficult subject, you know, violence against women, harassment. I mean, not many men would like to talk about it. And uh, he was brave enough to bring the topic and talk about the point that women, even if they want to have sex with someone, they have the right to say no at any point, even if you're already in the bed and you don't want to do something and no should mean no and men should back off, you know, like even, I mean, my character, she is an ordinary woman, very compassion, strong, but she understood that so many uh, accidents of violence are happening, harassment, and she wants to stop it, you know, we all want to stop it, but she got because of uh, her friends were killed in Morocco and she got to the point when she cannot help, but she wants to go and take her the justice into her own hands. So that's what she does. What kind of stunt prep did you have to do or physical prep did you have to do with it? There's so much butt kicking in a good way. <laughs> And I really enjoyed it. Uh, I was preparing for two months with our stand coordinator, Yunus Binzakur. We were doing like karate, jiu-jitsu, boxing. And it was, uh, I mean, uh, those people who will buy it soon is, is going to be out 29 of July 29 uh, on BOD. You, they will have a special behind the scene and they will see actually how it was. You know, they, we have this beautiful um, shots when I was preparing and how it uh, look, look how it will look in the movie. So you, you can see my trainings a bit. Uh, yeah, it was hell of a ride. I mean, two months, um, three, four times a week, I was fighting, I was preparing and kicking those asses. <laughs> Michael, talk about how Vance then was described to you. He's an interesting fellow. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, he's a he's a lover, that one, you know? <laughs> no, Jamie, he's he's horrendous. So he was described to me as a man who takes what he wants. And no doesn't necessarily mean no if you are persistent in whatever it is that you want out of this life, whether that's power, money, sex. And um yeah, they said just go deep and dark with him. And let the children be wild. Yeah. And let the children be wild. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, if, I can, if I can add, Michael did a great character because he has this range, you know, like he's jumping from the romantic hero, superstar, you know, the guy everyone loves, and he jumps into something very dark. Like, wow. Was there? Yeah, the thanks. Exactly. I was just going to say, is there something then about him that really drew him because he's so opposite from the roles we've seen you in before? Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. So the thing about Vance was I, I really enjoy characters with duality. So I enjoy that he's a superstar and in his own way, he should be able to have whatever he wants because he is enough. He has a rock star lifestyle. He's got businesses on the side. He has passive income coming in. You know, he has everything at his fingertips, but what really drew me to him was that gluttony aspect of human behavior, which is how much is enough? And when are you just being, <laughs> I hate to say like a horrible person because you're not, but like, when do you start? It becomes an addiction to take and take and take. And living in New York and Los Angeles and coming from very humble beginnings in Texas, from a very, very blue collar family, and then seeing the extravagance of some of these places that I've had the opportunity to live in, I really wanted to dive into the psyche of some of the people that I had met who were able to get ahead by taking advantage of 
of others by, you know, stabbing people in the back. And I've always been curious, what would it be like if I, as Michael Patrick Lane, wasn't such of what I consider to be a good man? What if I let go of everything that I hold on to as my value structure in the pursuit of having as much as I could take from this world? So I really wanted to go maybe a little too far with that, but I wanted to explore that side of humanity that I don't operate with as a normal human being. Michael went deep with the character prep. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. It was so much fun. Though. I really enjoyed the process. And like you said, I, I haven't had the chance to uh, explore that because I went from doing, you know, Dynasty, which has been great. And these really fun characters on like Sun Records and then like getting the Emmy nomination for like Rekindling Christmas and, you know, doing a couple Hallmark movies. And I really wanted to explore uh, this aspect. And Hisham trusted me with it, which was so amazing. And then all the cast uh, have been so supportive. And Jonathan, our writer and our director, Zor, uh, just have been really supportive because like you said, um, I haven't been able to do this type of a character. So it was my job to do all that character prep and make sure I'm bringing in, you know, someone with some authenticity there. Well, Armour, there's so many intense and exciting and thrilling moments for my uh, how did you shake off all of that adrenaline after filming all those big scenes? <laughs> you know, adrenaline was all around. Even after filming, it was still because we were traveling in Morocco. And it's an amazing country. You know, I couldn't imagine that it's going to be so welcoming and people would offer us tea and dates all the time, like even in the tiny villages, you know, like it's. And actually, that movie was happening. It's already i was also as a producer there because it, it was a miracle that this movie happened you know we shot it during the lockdown so just as soon as morocco opened it, it, its borders we uh, flew the crew flew actors and we could make it but it was all created during the lockdown and we were all you know sitting at home and uh, uh, the world stopped but we found this topic and we wanted to talk about it. And it, it was magical how it all worked, but uh, it was a work in the progress, you know, like it was so many things to prepare after the shoot. It was, I mean, it was an incredible journey. And also, um, you know, like it was a lot of things going around. And can you imagine we were talking about harassment uh, of women and even during the shoot, about this topic that happened. We were so crazy about it that one of the actors that we invited, he started to harass a woman during the set and it was crazy. I mean, you can understand how huge this problem is if it happens even on the set. He was escorted off, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he got a little flirtatious, he was like, yeah, you're leaving, buddy. You're out of the you movie, sorry. Method. He went a little too method with his acting. A little too method. It's like the cameras aren't rolling. What are you doing? <laughs> kind of, kind of, kind of. Jamie, thank you for having us here because really we wanted to spread the world and uh, put uh, this problem out there because, you know, this movie and all these stories like uh, Michael's story, story of me, Sneak, story of Scandinavian girls killed in Morocco, it, this all it's based on the true events. And we know that with this movie, some people will recognize themselves and some others will question themselves. That's what is important. Well, it's a very big topic these days with uh, a promising young woman yeah. is, a, is a big comparison to this particular film, but I think this one sets it apart in a different, <laughs> of a different light but Irma this is such a powerful film what do you hope that viewers take away when they watch the moderator I really hope that a lot of men will question themselves and they will understand that no means no and if a woman doesn't have a physical power to stop him 
there is some power out there which can come and revenge you know it's like when we were kids they would say like don't do something wrong and uh, otherwise policemen will come and now i hope that at least some men will put in their mind that if they do something wrong to a woman the moderator will come you're listening, Michael. Be <laughs> stay on the the good side of Irma. Hey, I'm I'm getting married in September. I'm on the good <laughs> side. I'm I'm on the I'm on the right path here. Vance, not so much. <laughs> I was gonna say you are a part of social media, Michael, and you are going to get maybe a, a lot of comments for this uh, different side of of Michael Patrick Lane that we're gonna be seeing. Are you looking forward to the response that people will be sending you to this particular one? Gosh, you know, I, I watched it recently. <laughs> I watched it recently and it's, um, look, I'm really proud of, of everything that we did. And I'm really proud of the work that I put into Vance and how he came across. Um, but I, I maybe, I, I, he's, he's horrible. He's horrible. So no, I don't know. I'm, people are gonna come after me. But, you know, if they come after me, what that means, though, is that we struck such a chord with the crafting of that character and where we took him and how far all of us agreed that he should go. We were very respectful on set. But if we strike that much of a chord, which would be great, that means we made a difference. And that's a positive thing. So let them come at me and uh, I'll just be spreading love and um everything that is not vance on social media because that's who i am we can tell based on the uh ted lasso sign behind you you know it follow your dreams believe keep going just be a goldfish keep swimming just be a goldfish and keep swimming yes ma'am <laughs>